Let's talk a little Cruton, John. Connor Stroh, the offensive tackle from Frisco, Texas, took an official visit to the Plains this past weekend. Of course, you know, on his exit interviews with a lot of the local reporters, it was all positive, but it always is. What What do we know about what happened? Yeah, I haven't heard a recruit say they hated a visit since, uh, I think, Bo Scarborough at Notre Dame because it snowed, and he was like, I don't know about this, uh, but usually very positive. And, sure. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and it's it's the case with Connor Stroh. But look, it wasn't his first time on campus, and that's certainly encouraging for AU, as is the fact that this was his first official visit. I think every, it seems like there's a, a notion right now with these seniors that aren't the, the most you know, highly rated kids, everyone else, so 90% of these kids, there's like an urgency to take a bunch of visits in May and June and make a decision before the season. And Connor is one of those kids that's kind of on that timeline. So in that light, you're going to take four visits in, let's say, five weekends. So just from a, a fatigue standpoint, getting the first trip is a really nice deal. You're kind of the table setter from a visit perspective. Yeah. Um, and Auburn was really all in on him during this trip. I, I was thinking of – other schools that had big official visit weekends, it's four, five, six kids. It was just Stro at, at Auburn. Uh, so I think when you talk about the intimacy and the time with multiple coaches, when it's just one official visitor, there's no spring practice going on. There's no game planning going on like there will be, you know, ahead of Penn State, a little bit more stress for Brian Harson and company. It's all about recruiting one kid and one family. That's the ideal way to, to get that first official visit. So I do think – on Auburn's end, they've, they've lined it up uh, pretty smartly here uh, yeah. organizationally just to position itself in that light. Uh, and then, you know, his list of schools is changing too, right? It was a top five. All of a sudden, he axes Florida from his official visit schedule and his list of schools kind of out of nowhere. So it becomes a, a four-program race, you know, that quickly. So I think that's great news uh, for Auburn. You know, obviously, the in-state schools are going to factor in for a Texas kid. But when you start to look at the out-of-state bubble, you know, that's another contender that uh, that Auburn doesn't have to deal with, with the Florida Gators. So I do think that's a good thing, uh, especially, yeah. again, for a kid who's going to commit here in, in the next couple of months. So now, in theory, you've built a lead. How long can that be sustained as these other trips go down? Uh, that's the million-dollar question. But look, Auburn needs offensive linemen yeah. in, in the worst way. I would say nationally, they're, they're among the teams that need them the most. Um, and that resonates. You know, linemen are, are very much old school in how they handle recruiting. It's very business-like. Uh, so if you are going to leave the state of Texas, this type of situation would make sense uh, for Connor Stroh, who's got some versatility. He can be a guard or a tackle. So I'm, I'm curious to see how other teams sell him positionally yeah. versus what Auburn is saying when, when they're like, hey, we need guys everywhere. So it maybe right. could be, you know, a bit of a blessing, uh, at least from a recruiting standpoint. So I think you're in good shape there if you're an Auburn fan, uh, but obviously you got to kind of sit back and, and wait and see who catches up. Yeah, his top five was Auburn, Arkansas, Florida, Texas, and A&M. Uh, as you mentioned, it seems like Florida's out of it. So down to Auburn, Arkansas, Texas, and Texas A&M. But, you know, this guy... He's not, I mean, he's not like this stud of an offensive tackle. I think he's pretty good. And I think, you know, he has traits, but like he's not, you know, a unanimous four star across the board or anything like that. But it seems like Auburn's kind of treating him as if he is. Are the other programs doing that? Yeah, I, I think it'd be hard for AM to do it. And I think that's why, you know, schools sure. out of the state are feeling like they've got some upside. Texas just signed seven O linemen last year. Mm -hmm. uh, that NIL deal they have for linemen is amazing, though. So we certainly, understand that you know he's a frisco kid so he's a little bit closer to austin than, than a m so i think a m is probably um a little bit on the outside looking in relative uh, to some of the others uh yeah. so arkansas auburn and texas i think in particular are, are probably in the best shape here uh because a m's in it for a, a, every big offensive tackle prospect and that's the other thing that's why i said i think it will be interesting to see positionally where we're looking at him at relative to the schools. Cause I do think he's got some guard or right tackle flexibility. Um, but if he's, you know, one of these kids that's like, Hey, I have to play tackle. Uh, then maybe that will affect his decision accordingly. So it, it will be interesting, but yeah, like you said, there, there are guys higher on the board at other schools relative to probably Auburn and Arkansas in particular that are more like, Hey, we trust what we look at first. Um, you know, in the recruiting process. And they're probably not targeting as many linemen as, as a Texas A&M, which is probably a good thing for, for Connor 